Hello, we're fixing everything. And because there is always something, so we fix this 47 years old boiler needs uh, needs some fixing. Uh, I'll show you what the problem is in a second. Usually when I'm fixing this I can drain them through one of the pipes, but because this one is so old, maybe there is two pipes going up to the top. Yeah, usually it's only one pipe, but this one is handmade very long time in the Soviet Union times and uh, it doesn't want to drain. I try to drain it through one of the pipes. I try to drain it through the top. Now what needs to happen, I'll show you the uh, heater is actually leaking. This heater is leaking right next to the electrical connections and you can see it, it leaks from right there. So what I'm gonna need to do is take all the cables out it's all removed from the electrical connection which is this one the big one um, so it's all removed from there I'll film a little bit and just remove the electrical connectors from here and take everything out because this one is proper dangerous if it's being left like that and I'll need to drain the remaining water through the bolts after I remove the plate with the immersion heaters. First thing I'll do, I'll remove this button, I'll undo these two bolts and I'll drop it down. Now the light I want to remove. Now the next thing is just undoing this bolt here and the two electrical connections on the heater. So this one will be removed. I think that's a washer, yeah. And there is one round wire. I think it's for the adjustment here. So there is actually two. I'll just try to undo the screws and pull it out. So this wire that comes from the big electrical socket. I just pulled it out from here and there is one more so I need to get undone I have no idea there is four cables and there is this box here so probably something is happening in there and we only have one cable coming to the connector on the heater. I couldn't remove it from from over there, so I just remove it from this pin here. This cable. And now with this one disconnected, I'll just put it to one side and I'll start undoing the bolts. What is this one? Whatever this one is. Okay, I'll start undoing the bolts. I didn't know what this one is, but I pulled it relatively easy from 
from here it was just like this there is some kind of controlling I don't know so take it out from here as well I don't like the idea of water leaking onto the thermostat when I undo the plate so I'll just take this this thing out I don't think it's gonna be that hard anyway this little piece okay, the small nut and there is one more Okay, so I just managed to undo the screw here and I think I will be able to take it out. Okay, yeah, well, let's continue now with taking the bolts out. Okay, just before I start, I took all the electricals out and everything will lead into the pan. Now you can clearly see the leak and everywhere on the side of the plate is dry yeah which means that it leaks from the gasket because it's very very old okay what I'm gonna do now 17 millimeter socket take the impact and drop the plate and while I'm doing that I think it will need I think how, how much, 100 liters of water to drain it straight into the toilet Okay, so as you can see I managed to get the pipe out That's how thick it is It's around 7-8 millimeters and was completely full with gunk Yeah The rubber is actually almost plastic it's not rubber at all, and I don't. I think it's handmade. I don't know. These grooves here, they are on the boiler as well. You can see it on the inside. It's that thick as well on the inside. Now I'll manage. I think I'll manage to find some rubber, but I'll also put a bit of uh, RTV silicone just to make sure I can have it nicely uh, sealed okay let's find some some rubber and make a new gasket I was thinking that the seal seal the rubber seal gasket it's uh, handmade but it's actually manufactured it cost one euro Good, that's going to be fine. So now, uh, I want to check up on the on the element if uh, it's beeping when uh, it may that's good, I think the element is element is perfectly fine. Let's try on this side as well. Oh no. I think that's bad enough. Okay, we'll see what I can do about this one. It's just the leg of the heating element. It's completely corroded away. Can you see? And it's integrated. 
Let's we'll see what we can do about it. I managed to take one of these plugs out and I think I'll be able to solder something to here to be able to, you know, that's completely unsafe, but I don't think we can find another one. This one is really good. Well, we'll see. Because we got no power at the house right now, there is an electrical problem with the main lines. Uh, this is also bad, here you can see the cables and uh, we don't want to replace the door, the you know, the, the whole cable so I'll just put some shrinking tape and we'll see in the end the end result, otherwise this one is proper dangerous like this. Okay, so we have power now. Meanwhile I insulated all the cables, there was a a lot of broken wires so I insulated them and I managed to fix here the insulation you can see on the left one I got the ceramic one and I had to chop off a little bit I grind it how much you can see I don't know ah there we go I think through this angle Yeah, it doesn't touch here as well. I'll check again with the multimeter just to make sure. Okay, the panel. It's good if you see something. <laughs> so, nothing on here. Nothing on here as well. I think that's fine as well. And here. Everything's so corroded, good luck. Important thing is that here is not catching anything. Let's see the thing itself. That's good. That's very good. Okay, now let's continue with the uh, seal. I have it here somewhere. There we go. I'll leave the grooved part to go on top or to go down. Maybe to go down. Okay. Now, let's clean up the inside a little bit. I will just place the heater down, the heater up, and we will bolt it down. Okay, I have a seal prep. I was thinking to put some RTB silicone, but I don't think it's worth it. 
we decided to change the bolts because the old bolts were a bit too much corroded for my safety so we'll put a new bolts on I bolt it down the plate and I will start it to put the electrical components this is actually a thermal switch that's a thermostat um, so I'll wire it up and I'll show you the whole thing wired up and working ok so I wired it up if I want to explain you how did I wire it up I don't even know because I just followed the video that I made and it was so tough because I didn't want no cable to be touching and I wanted to know which one does what I don't know because it's four cables coming out of this big one and the uh, installation of the house is only two wires, it's from the 40s, so a bit tough to understand, so I just wired it the way it was wired and I changed a few cables and a few bolts here on the switch I tested it's working and I'm filling it up now with water I opened up the, I opened up the tap I closed this one that I drained it from and uh, you can hear it's it's filling up with water now. Hopefully it wouldn't leak from the bolts. Even if it leaks from the bolts, I will just tie them up because it's rubber; it will settle down. Okay, I can hear it's starting to fill up on the other side so I'll just close the tap in the kitchen okay so the test didn't go well the cracked heating element actually leaked straight through the nut so um, I had to buy a new one you can see my other video on how to replace the immersion heater it's completely separate part so I'll take this job so it's not that quick it's very hard to find the element though um, so I'll we'll just start, uh, it's actually good that it's a brand new element, I'm only using one of the elements though, it's two elements, so I'm just using the bigger one, one is 1000 watts and the other one is 2000 watts, I don't think the cable here is good enough for 3 kilowatts, so I'll just use one element, and I'll have to um, get all the electrics right again